the dads, Hola. the babies, mamas, the babies, mamas, mamas. Oh, okay. Was that outcasts? <laughs> yeah. I'm sure there's all of you that fit that criteria in the audience. We got a huge audience this morning on Facebook Live. Thanks all for joining right. the show, everybody. 150 and strong. Nice Goodness. and early. It's a great day. We had just finished bagels because it's uh, yeah. Cindy's oh, one of our yes. co-workers' birthdays. Happy, Happy birthday, Cindy. 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 And I think 27 years like young. Bagels cake. for everyone. Oh, it looks like an ice cream cake. Yeah, but she put that right in the fridge. That's not for us. That's it. She walked away with that. She did cut us off. Help yourself to the bagels. I don't blame her. Cake is mine. Mm -hmm. I know. Uh, ice cream cake at the top of any cake. Oh, You're totally never so going to convince me otherwise. Really? Oh, Name a better I'm cake. I'm Okay, well then I'm the oddball out because you, you love like, it. I just like regular cake. Regular so you cake. can make them. I've seen on Pinterest and I really want to try it, but I also feel like it's going to be a total Pinterest fail. It's like a disaster. I know, but you know, at least you get ice cream. <laughs> like you cannot screw up the ice cream. So they're you can cheap now. Yes. They're like 10 bucks. Mm. And no, it's like a weight balance free. thing. So I want it because I haven't been oh. able to have an ice cream cake for like 10 years. <gasps> so that's why I'm like, I need to do this. What a fast. So you're obsessed with it. It's terrible. Years. It's yeah, terrible. So let us know. We want to see the true Pinterest post though, not like just that it looked perfect. I want to see the fail if it fails. Everything. Be real. <laughs> so this has absolutely nothing no, to do nope, with what we're zero. talking about today. But we usually start like this. Except kind of, social well, media. Kind of. It involves like parents Shaming? and social media. Yeah, no, we're all in the same boat. We're news people. We can no, do crying. segues like Tense. this. Uh, so here's what we are talking okay. about. Um, online, there's this post trending on Facebook right now that a mother posted that shames her daughter a little bit. We're going to pull it up for you in just a second. You're going to have a hard time reading what the post says, so I'll try to paraphrase it for you. More or less, mom went out school shopping for mm -hmm. her daughter, and she went to three different places trying to find this pencil box that her daughter wanted. Mm -hmm. There it is. You see it there in the upper right. <laughs> now she gets the box can. for her. She <laughs> takes it home. Little girl says, I don't want it because everyone has it. So mom chucks it in the trash and says, listen up, whippersnapper. <laughs> you're going to get a Ziploc bag for your pencil holder, and you're going to like it. Yep. So mom gives her that instead. Kid throws a temper tantrum. Mom decides to share this online. And that's where the question comes in. When is it okay to publicly shame your kids? There are little idiosyncrasies to this story that I think we're all in agreement that, that this probably isn't such a bad thing that mom did, but we want to have the discussion with you, and we'd like to hear the counterpoints to it. Do you think it's okay to ever publicly shame your kids online? Let us know what you think in the comments section. There's a Ziploc bag. And we'll let you know uh, <laughs> what we think. Yeah, there's she the real pencil a new trend. Bag. Exactly. There's yeah. a lot of utility to decorate it, bag. put stickers on it, personalize Ooh, it. Yeah. yeah. I just I bought a label maker, so I am all <laughs> I'm <laughs> labeling <laughs> literally everything. Mom it's mode so obnoxious. <laughs> That's what I would do if I were her. I mean, come on, you can kick this off at school. Make the best and everybody yeah. would bring the little Ziploc bags and decorate yeah. them the way you yeah. want. So, as a yeah. kid, I threw several temper tantrums. Oh, yeah. I can't daughter. imagine. I can relate more to the daughter. <laughs> he still mom, does but, it now. Uh, <laughs> you're in there. I, I remember one time, a memory that stands out to me, I think it was like my fifth or sixth birthday party. I was really into Ninja Turtles at the time, mm. as a, a person of my age Good. was at that age, right? So, um, I got some Ninja Turtles toy that I already had. I had an extensive Ninja Turtles collection. Yeah. The, the odds probably were that I was going to get a, a repeat of something from a stranger. And I made a scene about it. Like, I remember crying and being like, I already have this. Like, <laughs> oh, I hate that. My when mom was so oh my pissed it's so at me. You little right ungrateful. So, rightfully so. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry to whoever got me that Ninja Turtle uh, some <laughs> 25 odd years ago. Um, I, and I think I can relate to the moms that want to shame totally. their kids online because there's nowhere to vent that frustration. You can't yell at the kid and tell them how awful they are and really get through, especially to a really young yeah, kid. Yeah, you have to wait a little bit. But if you post it online, you can at least commiserate exactly. with your fellow parents That's that shared thing. suffering. We're all in this together. We're not the only ones. That's kind of the how I feel all the time with social yeah. media. Because you kind of feel like, am I alone or are my kids just evil? Right. Am I nuts? And you have to know the world nuts? you're not you're alone. Not, Everybody's not. going through the same right thing. I wonder, I don't know if they ever said how old the kid was in this well, story. Well, old enough to be in elementary school, well, I she's think. Elementary Probably school age. Six, seven, eight years old. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Somewhere in there is Judging by the pencil case. Well, I'm glad that mom didn't reveal that information, though. And as you yeah. mentioned yeah. on the show, they didn't, didn't post, post a picture, picture. of her either. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think that brings Which the shaming down a notch. Yes. We've seen the kids not only get in trouble, but like the moms making them stand on the mm -hmm. corner in front oh, of the house, wearing the shirt that says. I'm a bully or whatever. Yes. They definitely have been more public about it. So I felt like this was more of a just listen to my story is this crazy this is what i did kind of yeah. sharing i like david's Not response shame. here he said better response i'm giving this to someone who will appreciate it no public announcement will work great and that's true i feel like if i had yeah. a child yeah. and that happened i'd be like okay i went out of my way to get this for you right. so you need to learn to appreciate it yeah. you know and if you don't then i'm, I'm going to give it back or take it back to right. the store yeah
That's how I would be if I was a mummy. We have those conversations all of the time at home. I told you guys during mm -hmm. the show, you know, I'll say, oh, here's a fruit snack. Well, I didn't want a fruit snack. I wanted gummy bears. I'm just oh, like, yeah. oh my goodness. You are so frustrating. So I think, you know, <laughs> if you are going to publicly shame your child, this lady went about it, I guess, the right way, if you do agree with that. But personally, I think for me, I'm not a fan of any kind of publicly public shaming like this because I think then it teaches your child to maybe act like that in the future. It is childish in its own right. Yeah. yeah. So I think you can just have these conversations and right. closed doors. Keep it in-house. Exactly how yeah. she did it. And then, you know, I have a text chain with a couple awesome moms yeah. and we are constantly like, <laughs> That's did awesome. you see this? <laughs> oh, I can't believe it. And then like within 30 seconds, our phones are blowing up. You got this girl. You're doing Bruh. great. We love you. You know, so like, and then that's another way to kind of get the support. support so that's my personal opinion, you know, yeah. but I know there's a lot of other. May I provide there. a third option? Sure. Okay. Could you phrase it as a question? I always try to be diplomatic as, as a oh, news anchor. Socratic with somewhat method. of a, a, a profile here. I try not to be too hard line with anything. Yeah. I try not to let my opinions, at least my strong opinions, be publicly known. And so whenever we post something like this or even something in my own personal life, if I'm upset about something, I like to phrase it as like a what would you do? Yeah. And maybe in this situation, she posts a picture of the Ziploc bag and uh, of the pencil box yeah. and yeah. says, my kid demanded this box. Mm -hmm. I went and got it for her. She says everyone wants it. She doesn't like it. Should I send her to school with the Ziploc bag tomorrow or should I give the pencil case back to her? You guys decide. Oh, and make it gonna... someone else's problem. <laughs> yeah. If you're going to put it on social media, it's like a poll. make it the high vibes <laughs> yeah. problem. Almost, yeah. yeah. And that way you're getting your frustrations out. Yeah. You're letting the other parents know where Less you're at shame. on it. Yeah. But you're not calling the kid out. And you're yeah. not shaming the kid in a post that will live forever on Facebook. Yeah. yeah. I just get nervous of like what they'll see someday right. and how it could affect them. Because, you know, social media is still pretty new and we don't really have all of those mm -hmm. answers. So that's, you know, something I try to think about. No matter what I post, whether it's like a silly picture of the kids, will mm -hmm. they care about this when they're 13? <laughs> right. The little bath <laughs> pictures they might. My yes. Bad. I know. I always can't do those anymore. So Jim said, Says, you must teach your kids that actions cause consequences, so her actions are justified. Also, it does not matter what others think, so it should not affect the child. That's kind of what Richard says, too. He's one of the top fans in the comment section. Appreciate you, Richard, for stopping by the show as often as you do. He says, now nah, this is a private thing. Your kid will not respect you. And I think that's a good point because the kid may not even understand what respect is at that mm -hmm. age, but it is, it is a learned behavior. And so mm -hmm. if you're doing childish things, it's, yeah. it's like parenting right. 101, right? Don't scream back at them. That's not right. how you resolve conflict. Right, right. That's being a child mm -hmm. in, in much the same fashion that you're upset with in the first place. Yes. You can talk stern to them though. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I am the, I am a, I'm the a two God. parents over here doing yeah. out there. No, I right? know. I'm a godmother, so I have, you know, and yeah. my, my, all my best friends and my cousins that, you know, I'm the godparent of their kids, they're like, oh, we're going to send them to Nina because <laughs> Nina's strict. Yeah, like, yeah. you know, Nina puts the law down and not mean, but I'm just stern yeah, with yeah, what I say. Yeah. And then they listen to me, yeah, you know? No, so, it, I mean, it works. Hey, if you're all rainbows and butterflies all the time, they're going to walk all over <laughs> you. They know it at a very young age. I want to send a shout they out to some of the people uh, saying yeah. hi this morning. Wendy, to Mario, to Maxine, to Danielle, to Wendy, to Linda, everybody uh, saying Good hi morning. in the comments section. Appreciate yeah. you guys. I have a question. Yeah. What about when you have both parents in the picture yeah. and mom like no you don't deserve this you know whatever and then dad's like ah go ahead and give it to her so I was just talking to a friend about that the other day because his wife is a child psychologist okay and so he like with the daughters he's like no when I tell you to pick up your room and go to bed you do it now and mm -hmm. it's just like that's it and so they were discussing like do they get punished do they get popped whatever it is you know their method of discipline is and of course the wife who's a child psychologist mm -hmm. is like no you got to talk them through it and talk them down so when you have two totally uh, yeah, different that's, that's so hard I know. So my husband and I, kind of, our rule is um, never disagree in front of them. Yes. You have to so be united like front. At the time, you have to have the united front. We can discuss, like, later, uh -huh. privately, if we thought the other handled it incorrectly or whatever. But <laughs> you have to present that united front because they have to, because they know how to play one parent against the other. We so all do. Yeah. As professionals. They're so they good at that. You have that one manager crazy. that lets you slide with some <laughs> yeah. things and the other one yeah. that doesn't. Yeah. And so you always go yeah. to the nice one first. Yeah. 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 I know. So that yeah, the United Front is it, it can be tough sometimes, oh my, especially in the heat of the moment when you're both like uh, sad and the kids yeah, are driving you crazy. Well, it's and, very. And hard. I imagine you never feel like you know that you have the right answer 100. percent I imagine there's always a little uncertainty as no. one parent, especially if the, your spouse is disagreeing with you. Yes. And, and that's kind of what Sue says. I think mom was looking for affirmation yes. for her actions. Mm -hmm. She wanted someone yeah. to tell her that it was okay. Yeah, 
Yeah, and that's part of that whole Facebook community thing with your friends. Yeah. When, I'm assuming it went out to her friends. She, I, she probably didn't think it was going to be on the news in right. some random <laughs> city like, across the country. Sorry about that. Lived. Sorry that you're the focal point She's of this probably discussion. just aiming it toward her <laughs> yeah. friend group. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you just it's like commiserating. You just want to know, am I doing this right or am I going to have these kids back in a therapy office in 30 years? That's kind of my thing. The answer is almost always yes to that question. But that's, that's neither here nor there. Uh, so Karen wrote a really long, well thought out response here. I'd like to read it to you yes. guys. It says, I, I think it is absolutely wrong to shame your child on any social media because kids get shamed enough on social media. There's no need to add to an already growing issue. We talk about that on the air all the time, the social bullying and the things that kids are dealing with in school now that we didn't really have to worry about when mm -hmm. we were in school. This, unfortunately, will stay with the child for a long time to come. There are many other ways to have handled the situation. For example, have your child volunteer at a yes. food bank or a homeless shelter so they can get inside on what having nothing means. Yes. Besides, you should not put all your personal business on social idea. media. Keep it private. Thank you for that response, Carrie. That is a great idea. I love that. We, my husband and I talk about it all the time. As soon as, you know, our, our oldest is almost five. And so as soon as he gets a little older, we are going to start taking him to the food banks and things like that because he is so lucky and he gets yeah. so much. Oh and gosh. we definitely, he's a great kid, but we start to see that little attitude popping up. And I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. This is not going to happen. Mm -hmm. So, you know, sometimes you spoiled, just have yeah. to remind them of like how lucky we are. Not everybody gets yeah. to be born here and blessed with as much yeah. as we are. Oh um, gosh, question yeah. for the adults in the room. How do you find that? <laughs> well, so all three of you. Okay. Um, how do you find that that balance and that peace in your personal life? Like, how do you remind yourself of how fortunate you are? Is there something you do or, or an activity or something you watch or read that reminds you of, of your blessings, for lack of a better word? While you think about it, I'll give you mine, because the first thing I thought of when you mentioned going and checking out the shelters and things like that is, is doing what I do for PCH in the Christmas time mm -hmm. for Ignite Hope, which yeah. is their, their big fundraiser and their walk. Um, for, for Ignite Hope, for the kids over at PCH who can't get out of the hospital during the holidays. Yeah. That grounds me so much. Mm -hmm. Like the build up to it and then the event itself is always so emotional because you forget in the everyday, the run of the mill grind, just how lucky you are to have the problems that you have when there are so many other people, not just the kids, but their families, their mm -hmm. siblings that have to deal with so much more serious issues yep. on an everyday basis. Oh my gosh, yeah. And you just, you're like, wow, I'm taking everything for granted. And it's so good to ground you a bit. Yep. I just wondered if you guys do anything like that that really helps like drive that message home for you. Well, for me, you know, I'm a cancer advocate. Mm -hmm. So I think about that all the time about cancer patients, whether it's, you know, from babies all the way to adults, mm -hmm. but the things that they have to go through, the chemo, the radiation mm -hmm. and how their lives change drastically. And it's just like, and it could, it doesn't, it can happen overnight. Like one day the person feeling normal, they go to the doctor and then they're diagnosed with some yeah. type of cancer. And it's just like, it changes instantly like that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think life's too short now. So I'm constantly thinking of that. Like when we complain about working so early in the morning, oh I'm gosh, like, Vanessa, yeah. okay, but you got a job. Exactly. It's a pretty yeah. cool job that people want. A nice know. ride, a roof over yeah, your head. Yeah, all kinds of things <laughs> yeah. like that So I'm, that I worked hard for, by the way. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, but like, it's, I think about those things, and then I'm like, okay, you just have to appreciate life because it could be changed tomorrow and instant, yeah. you know. Yeah, oh, definitely. But I think this job in general reminds you a lot about That's that because we say. see and report on uh, everything and anything. And so you, I feel like the stories that we tell every day kind of is a reminder yep. to me, mm -hmm. um, you know, there by the grace of God because it's so hairpin close mm -hmm. right it is you know, so, in so true. many ways yeah constantly telling close family and friends like yeah. you guys have no idea yeah. how lucky you are to just wake up tomorrow because mm -hmm. i just did this story with this family oh that xyz happened to them and it's so traumatic mm -hmm. and yeah i constantly just think about this job especially when you just deal with little nitpicky things in life that yes. drive you nuts yes. and you know other people who just care way too much about things that don't matter. Big picture, yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. All right, let's take a little break from this discussion. Your comments are still rolling in. I promise we'll get to a few more of them in just a moment. But first, this break for our ICYMI, in case you missed it, this morning on Today in AC. For fall, as we deal with more extreme heat, well, it can at least taste like autumn because Starbucks is rolling out its pumpkin spice latte nationwide today. But it's also debuting a cold pumpkin brew and get this, Starbucks says it sold more than 400 million pumpkin spice lattes since they first debuted back in 2003. That's a whole lot of pumpkins. But I tell you, the cold pumpkin brew, I am so there for that. That's like perfect for right now. So that's one thing I'm concerned about. Yes. I, I'm, I'm concerned in two ways. Tell me. One, I'm concerned because it might not be good, but I'm also concerned that I might love it. It's and then that's gonna more be good. Spice in my life than I probably can handle. As long as we get it non-fat, we're good to go, man. Make it happen. Sage advice. Ahead on oh. What we didn't see was 
that you guys got to taste. We yeah. did. How was that cold brew? Oh my gosh, I feel like I'm literally living that meme where it's like, you know, the, the boyfriend and girlfriend are walking and then the other girl walks by. <laughs> like, that is the pumpkin spice latte. <laughs> and, uh, no, now is the cold brew because the cold brew is like, I'm telling you, the pumpkin spice cold brew, and I'm not a huge fan of that particular brand. We'll just put it out there. But I did enjoy it. It was very good. Yeah, yeah. Yours was kind of lukewarm and yours was full fat. I, I'm not blaming Ooh. the person who ran to go get it, but I, I would I never order the full sugar, full fat pumpkin spice latte because I am now that many years old where I, if I drink it, I well, feel Plus, like I mean, the whole yeah. day, yeah. you're just like... But the skinny oh, no. ones, I can tolerate if I get the smaller ones. Uh, I think mine was skinny. <laughs> It tasted skinny, but yeah, so I, I don't know. But if you I believe it was skinny, food. it was skinny. Exactly. <laughs> I drank but the whole thing. I was going to say, so did you drink the whole thing? Yes, I did. Yeah, okay. And then afterward, I had a bagel with cream cheese, too. Yeah. So oh. I'm, I'm like, what are you worried about that? We just ate a whole bagel, Paul. Good morning. Yeah. Well, I know. no, you ate a bagel, and I ate a bagel. We didn't share one. We <laughs> ate a whole bagel of peas. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, full happy fat birthday again, cheese. Cindy. Yes. Yeah. We didn't get into your ice cream cake. I know. It was really good, though. I highly recommend trying it. Yeah. Hey, real quick, this actually reminds me of something. Coming up tomorrow on today, and easy. I'm going to give you guys a little sneak peek. Um, on the show, we're going to be talking about signs of fall being here a little too soon. I don't know if you've been to any grocery stores lately, Ugh. but you may have noticed that Halloween stuff is everywhere. I saw Christmas stuff at Michael's the other day. I'm like, that is offensive. You guys, the costume my four-year-old wants is already sold out. How is that possible? Wow. What? It is August. Are you working tomorrow? Share that story with okay. us tomorrow. But hang in there because sometimes you have people return it because they bought it and it's too small. Because <laughs> I'm always that the person. Shopper and Rachel. Because I'm like, who does the sizing charts on these <laughs> costumes? They're, They're so ridiculous. Hard. So yeah, you know, wait for it. Somebody will like either put it up on so. eBay or return it. Yeah, hang in there. So Keep we're going to be soliciting your feedback on this. And I also went into the Cardinals locker room to ask Cardinals oh, players fun. what they thought about it. So we'll have a montage of their responses awesome. about Halloween I stuff. I love being out Halloween. A little too early tomorrow on today. Halloween's one of my favorites. But um, it's too early early for Christmas. Mm -hmm. James uh, said he's got his Starbucks pumpkin spice cold brew in the fridge right, right now. There you go, James. There's no James, shame. James, tell me PSL. if it's not good. <laughs> it's very good. Because, you know, it's not sweet. The cold brew makes it a little bitter. Okay. So it's it's not sugary sweet like I think a lot of those um, dessert drinks at Starbucks are. So that's why I like it. Because it's like a little bitter, but then it gives you that <laughs> kick of pumpkin. Whoa. Yeah, you got the kick <laughs> Well, I had a second coffee today. I never do like, that. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm like, I should have had that at 5 a.m. <laughs> if the kids are watching, <laughs> run. You always have a morning shimmy. Wakes you right up. Jeez. Let's get back to I'm our topic. I'm out on that. Fast. I don't drink coffee. <laughs> So Susan brings up a point. Tell she me. says, as a child, you should appreciate your parents working hard to get yes. you something. She's still lucky she got something. And if, if I look yeah, back absolutely. at my childhood, that birthday included, the thing that I regret the most about the way I treated my parents was that I was ungrateful for the things that I didn't realize then were such big sacrifices for mm -hmm. them. Yeah. Like, whether it's monetarily to get me some dumb thing that I was really into that didn't matter at all and that I played with for two minutes and <laughs> tossed aside, or whether it was like investing in me in other ways, like whether it's their time or their resources and like taking me to Little League games, you know, two days a week for oh. 10 years. like. I, I was not appreciative enough of that because I didn't know what being an adult was like as a kid. And I think that's really tough for kids to rationalize what yeah. it's like to have the freedom of being an adult, mm -hmm. but also the responsibilities of being an adult and taking care of your snivelly little ass. <laughs> and so, like, I, I wish I could turn I back to my dad. And it's like a 10 year old, like, give I my mom a hug. You're a dad of a daughter, and then oh. you'll be like, oh, oh yeah, you you're in trouble. It, man, right around yeah. your face. That is the breaking point for all men, is yeah. when they have a daughter. Trust me. It is. That so happened true. with me and my dad. For oh, sure. My, my mom's like, dad. really? He's like, what? Like, <laughs> somebody has to be the bad cop, right? We talk about parenting together. Yes. But yeah, so my my son and I, my older one, we had that kind of full <laughs> blowout come to Jesus argument. I think it was last year where, you know, he was arguing about something. Usually it's like, can, why can't I get a phone? Why can't I get a phone? Yeah. So that's usually the oh, argument. I do impressions of you. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, all I'm hearing is like the peanuts teacher. <laughs> <you're talking. laughs> So he said to me, he's like, you never do anything for me anyway. And I was like, wow. oh, <laughs> it was like the Hulk, everything. But, and now he gets so mad because I still bring it up. I'm like, oh yeah, but I don't do anything for you anyway. After I signed you up for Little League, taking yeah, you to yeah. your game, signed you up for flag football, da da da. I'm like, all like, this we take stuff you out of town costs all the time. money. Yeah. All this stuff costs and a time. lot of money. And your sneakers and your this and your that. And I'm like, oh yeah, but I don't do anything for you anyway, right? Yeah. Remember? I love when the parents can rattle off the stuff like that. Sometimes I think the kids need that to hear it, to hear that reminder. Like, I, my young, I have a very young brother who's 17, but he was young enough that I was taking him to and from 
daycare when he was little, and like I was changing his diapers, and so I feel Aww, fraternally yeah. the same way that you probably feel with your with god your cousins, kids. your god kids. Mm -hmm. um, and so like he sometimes is just you know he's a 17 year old kid, so he doesn't he doesn't listen when he's told to do things. <laughs> and so my mom will have to give him the old. I do this, 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 you this, have to this, 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 this. Every and I just want you to unload the silverware in the dishwasher. <laughs> yeah. Like that juxtaposition, Why? I think, puts things into perspective. Yeah. I don't want to. Yeah. They never want to. Yeah, they never want to. For what it's worth, I, I hate unloading the dishwasher. Yeah, yeah, I don't like washing dishes. Because you have to bend yeah. over. Oh, it's the bending over. Like, Why don't they make it waist high? Yeah. So Why is it waist so low? That's but With the dishwasher? I despise yes. I want the so dishwasher low. here. I want it where my microwave is. I didn't even use the dishwasher. I wash them by hand still. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. Yeah. That's good. I guess that's good. Granted, it's only me, so <laughs> I don't have a ton of dishes. I, I dirty dishes all the time. So many. When and you put them in a something. dishwasher? Yeah. <laughs> but then I have to unload it. <laughs> I, there's one takeaway from the show today. <laughs> to the Somebody Maytag people out there. Invent a dishwasher a top up here. High. Yes. Please. <laughs> That's this level, so I can just <laughs> take away You have three Remember customers. all those things yeah. that talking about like the, work. the little things we complain about? <laughs> yeah. That's right. You guys are doing. It's back breaking. I'm not sure we reached a consensus it. on the, the kids shaming, but we are in agreement on dishwasher. Everybody needs <laughs> a waist high dishwasher. That's the magic of the Today and AZ after show. <laughs> time to get going, guys. We'll see you tomorrow. Same time, same place. 7.30 on the AM, right here on the 12 News Facebook yes. page. A shout out to our viewers this morning. Yeah. We had over 100 concurrent Woo! viewers the entirety of the show. Thank you guys. I think that's the first time that's ever happened. Ooh. Appreciate really? you guys. Okay. Very much. Thank you for spending your morning with us.